Well known for its rugged coastline and smugglers coves, today's Great British Dog Walk is a favourite with the locals and holidaymakers alike. And who better to be doing this walk with than my two faithful friends, Tilly and Poppy, my Shih Tzus. Hello, meet our owner of four years. She answers to the name of Liz, or Wolf sometimes, and she loves walking almost as much as she loves us. So we're looking forward to taking her on this walk. Today's Great British Dog Walk is on the north coast of Devon, and I have to confess, I've never crossed this path before, so it's gonna be a bit of an adventure for all of us. Come on, girls! I've always wanted to walk on the southwest coast path. It's the only path which spans four counties, and the part I'm walking on starts in the pretty village of Mort Hill, near the popular resort of Woolacoon. The whole of this trail is 630 miles long, but I think today we might just do a part of it, because their little legs will take them. So these are the girlies. This is Tilly Mint, the oldest. She's four and she's in charge. And this is Poppy May. Um, they're always together, so we call them Poppa Till or Tilla Pop. I don't know what we do without dogs in our house because I've always had them. We've we had a little uh, Yorkshire Terrier Sasha when I was a kid and my granddad had a dog called Pippa. When I, when I go to London, I always stay, stay in the house in London. We don't have dogs here and it's really weird, it's really quiet. Ah, that's where I want to go, more point. Come on, Gillies, let's go. Come on, come on. I'm enjoying the fresh air and scenery, even if the dogs do wander a bit too close to the edge for my liking. Oh no, not too close to the edge, please. Well, this path certainly is dog friendly because even where there's a style, they make it okay for dogs. Come on, girls. I'm now a third of the way round and I'm hoping Jonathan from the National Trust can tell me a bit about this area and why it's so great for dog walkers and those without any four-legged friends. So Jonathan, tell me about where we are now. We're actually sitting on the tip of Mort Point here. Uh, Mort, some people think, comes from the French word for death mm. uh, because of all the wrecking history that used to happen here a couple of hundred years ago. Yeah. But it's actually an old English name for um, small and stumpy. Oh and that's compared to Baggy Point over there in the distance. So what's that one over there then? Uh, that's called the Mort Stone. You can just see through oh, the breaking waves yeah. there. That's um, a treacherous piece of coastline here. Um, a couple of hundred years ago, there were hundreds of shipwrecks here over the years, basically. Because of that? Because of that. Is this a classic sort of dog walking area, this then? It's very popular for dog walkers. Yeah. We get over 80,000 visitors onto Mort Point. I have to ask you then, for me, um, I mean, we're not very fit, us girls, so have we done well today? You're doing pretty good, actually. You've come probably a couple of miles now from the village, so you're doing extremely well, actually. Well, as much as me and the girls have enjoyed resting our legs, there's more to see, so on we go. So, it's easy to see why we need a lighthouse. In fact, this stretch is notoriously dangerous for ships. I'm very glad we're on a very safe path. Come on, girlies. Careful now. Having said that, it's not all easy underfoot. Now, parts of these paths can get a bit wild at times, but don't worry, if you want to still experience the views, you can take shortcuts through the farmland. Come on, girls, slowly. It's amazing what you can stumble across on walks like these. I've kept the girls on the lead because I'm worried about the edge, but these sheep appear to be much braver. Thankfully, farmer David Kennard and his dog keep things under control. So is it hard shepherding around here? I mean, because, you know, it's, the, I mean, the, to me, the sheep look like they're tottering on the edge there. Well, it does present its own challenges. Most of all, we've got two and a half miles of unfenced cliff around the edge. Ooh. I think what people forget is that all dogs are chased sheep. Mm. And unless they've been proven not to, they will. It's, it's their basic instinct. Yeah. Out here, obviously, if it chases a sheep, it ends up going downhill with a cliff at the bottom. Oh. And that can have you know, fairly serious results. The mm. sheep either get stuck or we lose about five or mm. six a year, I suppose. So do, do we do we get on your nerves a bit as dog walkers around here? <laughs> no, you can't, you can't work in a place like this and keep it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it is incredibly beautiful. Um, but, you know, if people are sensible, and it's only the odd one or two, uh, most people are absolutely fine. He makes it look so easy, but the girls don't seem too bothered and are keen to press on. Well, the great thing about these coastal walks is the gems you find. And look at that, it's our own private beach. Come on, girls, fancy a swim? One, two, three, four! I have to say, this walk is amazing, really breathtaking. The dogs are absolutely loving it, they really are. There's something different for them because they're used to meadows, they're used to forests by where we live, and this is um, something totally different. As you can see, they're very happy. Oh. <laughs> 
Walk has taken a leisurely couple of hours, but it's now time to warm up our hands and paws. Looks stunning. I mean, look at that. Oh, bed and breakfast. Wonder if they take dogs. If you fancy taking in some sea air, then you could stay in a dog-friendly lodge at Wollacoon Bay Holiday Park. For a weekend break in a six-man lodge, prices start from £170. The accommodation is a good size, and they'll even provide dog toys and treats. Or if you want something a little more private, but with a beautiful view over Wollacoom, then Francis Cottage just rates from £345 for the week. And in this neck of the woods, you aren't short of dog-friendly pubs either. Come on, Geddes. Come on. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, now you can't have a great British walk without a great British pub and a dog-friendly one at that. So, the girls are asleep. I've got me bangers and mash. I've got me cup of rosy late, roaring fire. Oh. Now that our tummies are full and our paws are rested, time to go home and think about more great British dog walks. We've gotta keep walking.